it's raining like right, proper rain today not just drizzle proper heavy rain there's just a big clap of thunder as well there'll be some raindrops on the uh gopro lens i'm afraid but maybe i kind of feel like it adds to the effect today uh you can see the view in the quarries here yeah you can see loads can't you really nice day one of those days when you think should have gone out this morning when the weather was actually quite nice and i actually i kind of did um, i rode up to the quarries uh down flamberis side rather than up here uh, and i wanted to look at a route I was just been able to push up loads of steps. It was just a pain in the butt with the bike. I didn't have the lock with me, so I couldn't ditch it. Uh, so I left it and left it. And then thought, ah, oh, maybe it isn't gonna rain. Although it looks like it might do. Uh, and it is raining. So moral of the story, do things earlier, maybe. I don't know, no moral to the story, really. Today's vlog, waterproofs. They're rubbish, aren't they? I often think like, what is even the point of waterproofs? I don't go out in the rain a lot, except for work. Work, you kind of have to quite a bit. I never climb in the rain, except for work, because we live in Wales. And if you didn't go out in the rain, work-wise, you'd lose a lot of days work. But in a climbing sense, I'm not gonna go climbing in the rain. It's no, well, it is fun. It's fun every now and then. Uh, and you can still do a lot, but you can't do the hard stuff that I often want to do. Uh, and I've got lots of time, if you know what I mean. So like, if you're coming up here for a weekend to go climbing, well, you kind of got to max it out, haven't you? If you live here, you can just go another day or even after work or whatever. So there's never a great rush for me to get out. Although it's raining and grim, still flipping ace up here. Look at that view, proper atmospheric when it's like this, all the mist and cloud around. That's looking up into Australia. You can see the loon in the tube level and everything. Um, yeah, waterproofs. I reckon I'm going to have to swap hands a lot because although it's only the GoPro and it's light, I still get turbo pumping me on. There's two main types of waterproof, I reckon. I was going to say ones that work and ones that don't work, but that's not what I mean. The, the two main types for me are Paramo stuff and Gore-Tex type stuff. Uh, I'm wearing not Gore-Tex, Gore-Tex type stuff though. Uh, this is H2 No, Patagonia's own fabric. And my trousers, they're quite old. And they're this stuff called Event. And Event for me is probably the worst waterproof material ever made. Uh, that's supposed to be at like a high end level, not a fan at all. When I first bought this jacket, I was a bit disappointed actually, because I thought I was buying a Gore-Tex one, got it online. Uh, and when it came, it was this H2 No stuff. And actually it's been really flipping good. So already I'm contradicting myself by saying waterproofs are rubbish, but this has been really good. It's been as good as Gore-Tex for me. I've got more jackets at home. I've got another Patagonia, one of a similar fabric. It's a galvanized, it's a bit bigger, it's a bit stretchier. So a longer fit and stuff. So ace for walking around in. And the other one I've got is like a proper mountaineering jacket. It's called a, a Triolet and that is proper like heavy duty three layer Gore-Tex stuff. Like I say, apologies for the raindrops, but uh, like I say, maybe atmospheric or something. They kind of, they work when they're coming sort of fresh out the packets. I don't know if you can see, this one's kind of beading up quite well, actually really well. And it's, it's seen a bit of use, this one. So I've actually been really impressed with this. It's probably more than a year old, but because I've kind of got a few jackets, none of them kind of get hammered all the time. The other fabric I've mentioned, uh, is Paramo because the Gore-Tex stuff all works on like a similar principle. I'm not going to get geeky on it because there's little intricacies of it all but basically it's got holes in it and those holes are big enough for uh, like water vapor to pass through but too small for water droplets to go through okay so the idea being that it breathes and you stay you know keeping the moisture pushing the moisture out but not letting the rain in that's in a real simple form is it can you see there's a fly on the lens um but yeah they, they all work in a similar principle so yeah water can't get in but water vapor can get out so that's why we call them breathable the other main one paramo paramo works a bit differently it's kind of it's less of a shell layer like gore-tex style stuff is and it's a kind of a thicker and a warmer uh, affair. 
Now I never use Paramo. I don't, I don't kind of get on with it that well. What I find is that it requires you to sort of pump out some heat because left on its own, water will just kind of go through it. Slow it down, of course, but it'll just kind of go through it. My kind of real basic understanding is that it uses your heat to push out the moisture and keep the rain out. And now you might hear people saying about whether they run hot or they run cold. Hang on, just got to get the boy. How's all this way? Just going to go over the uh, gate here. Yeah, so people either run hot or run cold, by which they mean they usually feel cold or they usually feel warm. And for me, I run cold. Oi. I, I get cold really easily, probably like relatively skinny. I've got a body fat percentage of like uh, around 7% normally. So yeah, I, I really feel the cold. Uh, so for me, my perception when I've tried Paramo is I'm not running hot enough to really make it work. That, and I don't like the idea of it having that inherent warmth as well. I like the kind of traditional layering system of, you know, your base layer, I use merino stuff, and then, you know, something on top of that, some insulated kind of thing, whatever your choice is. Fleece is like the classic thing, isn't it? I use a lot of those insulated things like Patagonia. Uh, sorry, I don't know why I said that in such a chavvy way. Patagonia, nano puff, micro puff, those kind of things. And then, so they're looking after their job of keeping you warm and being breathable. And then the shell bit is just to keep me dry. That, and, and then you can sort of fine tune it by adding layers and all that kind of thing. Um, so I didn't get on with Paramo particularly, but some people swear by it. But basically I think, right, there's, there's two schools of thought on this. Paramo people, right, they're gonna be warm and wet. People wearing Gore-Tex type stuff, we're probably gonna be cold and wet. Uh, and that's kind of my view on it. I kind of think that um, a lot of Paramo people wear it and they won't say anything bad about it, even though they are soaking wet. Um, and pe people get really attached to their brands and things, don't they? I kind of say it is, this is doing really well, but it, it won't do forever, do you know what I mean? It will start to leak and you can see already, it is starting to wet out. Look at the arms already, you can see that wetting out. So as soon as it's wetting out, it's losing its breathability. Uh, and it's just gonna, the water's basically gonna start coming through eventually. Uh, I'm not gonna be out for long, so it won't be too much of a drama today. The other big issues, right, with any waterproof, where well, it's got flipping holes in it for a start, like down here, the cuffs, you know, water's always going down the cuffs, especially when you're holding the GoPro up and all that. And, you know, if you're a bit of a div like me, there you go, you forget to kind of close up the pocket so that fills up with water and holds it there as well. Um, the zips, look at these zips, waterproof zips. They are kind of waterproof, but not for that long. I'm just sort of paused here because I'm not sure which level I'm supposed to go at to find the route I want to find. So I'll go, I think one more level down. You can see the lake down there as well. Yeah, and these waterproof zips are nice and light and old school jackets used to have storm flaps and some still do to be fair, but it's not like a trendy thing to have these big old school storm flaps on. So these like save weight, but they just don't keep the water out as well as a proper double storm flap or the things I kind of looked at when I was a kid and when I was browsing through the old Cotswold catalog, I looked for features like that, don't have it. Um, so water just will get through and obviously that's the same for Parama as well. So. I think really, you've just kind of got to accept that in the kind of weather we get in the UK, um, you know, Wales, in Lake District, uh, Scottish mountains, all that kind of stuff, especially, obviously it rains everywhere, but there especially, you just got to accept that you are going to get a bit wet and, and kind of come up with strategies for dealing with it. So having the right spare layers and all that kind of stuff and you know, looking at the weather and where to go and when to go and everything. Look at that view, that is amazing. You can see just the clouds and that, just the mistiness around the, the ridges and that. I'm on the GoPro, like I say, so the picture quality isn't quite as good, but I didn't want to get the proper camera wet. Um, so what's the point of this? I'm not sure there is a point. It's like standard vloggy nonsense or is a bit of a clickbaity title as well something like waterproofs don't work because they do kind of work you just have to accept that they're going to fail sooner or later during that day out if you've got constant rain just the way it is and they're just not going to last you that long either you can do things to reproof them i find that but you know when it comes to reproofing though they're kind of already on their way out uh, and you're just kind of delaying the inevitable so how long can you get out of a waterproof well i mean because i said i've got a few I'd probably get like a couple of years out of a waterproof before it's knackered and pointless even trying to 
um, rejuvenate. That's my take on it. Other people will, will comment and say they've had this waterproof for years and years and years and it's been reproofed and all this, it's done really well. I'm always, honestly, I'm just a little bit skeptical of that with my own experiences. Um, you've got to wear them, they, they do something. They keep, they keep the water off for a while, but they're just like a limited time period, isn't it? And an old waterproof might give you minutes, a, a new waterproof might give you hours, but at some point the water is coming in. So there you go, there's my take. Pretty depressing vlog that, wasn't it? About how waterproofs are rubbish. Um, Event is especially rubbish, H2NO. Pretty happy with that, Gore-Tex. There's so many different flavors, it's hard to really comment on whether it works well or not. And loads of other stuff, I'm not trying to get into all the different things like Neoware and everything. It's just a general rant, really. Um, I think I'm getting close to my route and my arm's definitely getting pretty pumped. I know I've said this already, but look, look at that. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's sort of Snowden in the background there uh, behind all that mist and stuff. The boy doesn't really care. He gets cold as well. He's a bit like me. Um, when he's sat still, he does feel the cold pretty quick. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear what works for you. If you're commenting from abroad, you're less likely to get in the rain as much as we do. You know, people... Uh, in the Alps, for example, just don't really get out in the bad weather uh, quite as much as we do. Uh, probably the same in, in most other countries as well, but we, you know, there's other ones that are similar to the UK, of course, but if we didn't go out in the rain at some point, we just wouldn't get out very much. Uh, I'm going to sign off there before I'm just waffling now, but I'm just going to leave you with that view that the boy is enjoying. I think I might even be, by luck, on the right level. Oh, that's a route called uh, the Mau Mau down there. I don't know if I'm pointing at the right point. I can't really see. Uh, it's down there. They're actually quite dry at the moment. Uh, Manatee's just there as well. So I think I'm at the right height, which is uh, a bit of a result. It's like Lord of the Rings down there, isn't it? Awesome. Hey, um, before I go on even more, hope you've enjoyed that ranty video about waterproofs. Uh, chatting through that. Uh, if you liked that video, um, you know, click the like button, smash the subscribe button, find us on Insta, find us on Facebook, all that jazz. Uh, if you've got any questions, give us a shout. Thanks very much for watching. As always, more videos coming up very soon. Look at that, that puddle wasn't there when I came through, started this film. And now I've got no choice but to get these nice 510 tennies, which are ace shoes, by the way, super grippy. Amazing how grippy they are on the slate, because slate is like slipperier than a slippery thing. That's the sole. It's like that dotty kind of stuff. But it's, uh, they're mega and they're 510 rubber. They aren't the slightest bit waterproof though. So this is me getting wet feet right here. That was only to show you like how much it's flipping rained in that time. Anyway, catch you later.